What's up, you guys? Sean Ross App Fightful here with a name. You know, we got Damian Priest. How you doing? I'm fantastic. SummerSlam, baby. It is. SummerSlam weekend. Man, you've had an awful lot of stuff happen in your career over the last year. It's so wild. I spoke to you last SummerSlam yep. in Vegas. Man, how things have changed since then. How are you feeling about the direction of everything? It's great. I mean, I'm still here, and I'm still having a great time, and I'm on SummerSlam again. You know, I, I like... What can I complain about, right? Exactly. So, uh, no, I, I feel great about everything. So as you're, you're, you're brought on to Raw, I mean, man, you are, like, supremely protected in some senses. You're winning all the time. You're in important stuff. You're, you're, you're winning championships. That's got to feel good for you because, I mean, I know you had options when you signed with WWE, and I know ROH wanted to keep you. I know there was a lot of that as well. So, I mean, that's got to feel like a, a reinforcement of your decision. Yeah, it, it, it feels good when you see like that the company trusts you, you know, and you don't feel like you wasted your your time or you know your abilities or anything, you know. Like the dream was it was what it should have been, you know, and, and I'm grateful for that. And it's crazy that it worked out better than I could have imagined. And man, things have changed so much in the last year. Judgment Day is a thing. And I mean, I remember hearing, I was reporting a lot of stuff about that, and I was like, I hear this person's involved, this person's involved. What did you originally hear about it? Because I mean, when you're told, hey, you're going to be in this stable, it's going to have these people in it, I mean, that's got to make you feel pretty good too. Absolutely. I mean, growing up, being a fan, like, part of that was like, I loved stables, I yeah. loved groups, you know? You know, I'm a big NWO guy. Yeah. I love DX, I love the Horsemen, I love Evolution. Like, there's so many factions that I was such a fan of uh, that. Now I got to be in one, you know, yeah. so so when this started to come about and, you know, originally it started with Edge and I and that's where it originated, where we had to talk and it was like, this would be cool if we did something like this. And then start throwing names around like who would be a good fit and who should we ask and who should we pitch and, you know, all, all this stuff. And it was exciting, man. I, I, that would really, even before we even started, just the conversations, I, I was so giddy and like, I was like, this is going to be so cool. You know, and now we're doing it. Now we're the judgment day. And I, it's cool, man. Like, I, I'm extremely happy and I get to, you know, like, Rhea and I, obviously everybody knows that we're, we're homies. Yeah. So, um, and Finn Balor's like one of my all time favorites. So, like, and us working together is. It's, this is definitely one of the coolest things I've ever done. And Finn Balor isn't somebody that like had jumped off the page as like, oh yeah, you know, I'd like to see Damian team with him. Then you see it happen, and you're like, oh my god, this this works perfectly. It's that big man, small man thing, but it's not like the plotting big man and the the like super fast small man thing. You all have like your, your styles are a little closer together than people realize. How has that been adjusting to teaming with him? It's been easy actually. Like it. We go out there and everything's just so like, like I said, it's a little easy, you know, where we just kind of know what the other person's thinking, know what the other person's doing, uh, and we just flow. And um, and we're just getting started. Imagine when we have some time together, you know, and all of us together, with what we're gonna accomplish and the chaos we're gonna cause, because that's the goal. It's just, you know, let's let's really cause some ruckus here, you know, uh, backstage, in front, behind the cameras. Like, that's like, we're going to have a blast with this. So, um, and, and so teaming with Finn is, he's on the same page. Like, we, 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 every time we're around each other and like we start talking about it, we're laughing, we're joking around. And it's like, this is going to be good. Because you know, that, that's how you know it's going to work. And uh, one of my favorite wrestling moves is the Falcon Arrow. You do a nice one where you heave the person as you do it. How did you sort of develop that and cook that up and be like, you know what? I'm just going to launch somebody while I do it. So, Broken arrow. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's, that's the difference between mine and everybody else's. It's that pop launch. Uh, honestly, it started because well, at first I used to just pick people up and toss them around. And T Bar, Dijack used to do that. So I was like, huh, how can I modify this and make it my own? And then I, I was also a fan of the, of the Falcon's Arrow. So I was like, oh, maybe I'll do a combination. Uh, and literally, I just tried it one night. And every, the crowd went crazy, and I was like, huh, that's a keeper. <laughs> so that's literally it. I just, I wanted to do something that's, I mean, it's done. It's simple. It's a move. It's a known move, but I wanted to make it into my own, and that's why I adapted, like, the slam throw into it. Speaking of making moves your own, I know right before WrestleMania you saw it when you switched up your finisher one week, and everybody's like, Cody, Cody, he's coming. What was, like, sort of your reaction to that? Because... 
that, that tipped some people off, but then you went back to using it the next week. What was the process by that? Because I know you saw that. Of course. And there was no, on my end, there was no thought as to why. It was just, I wanted to establish another move. That's all it was. There was no thought of because I was in a loser move. I just wanted to establish another move. This way, you know, and how many guys had multiple Undertaker? You know, the last ride, Hell's Gate, Tombstone, and the Choke Slam. You know, so for me, it was just, I need more moves that I can win matches with. I can't just rely on one move. So, and that's what it came down to, you know, and, and now, although I don't do use the reckoning anymore, but I still have, I have the South of Heaven, I have the Razor's Edge, you know, and contemplating throwing a submission there, you know, so that, that literally was the, the thinking and I saw all the, the stuff after and I thought it was, I was like, hey, whatever, give it attention, and whether it's right or wrong, it doesn't matter, it's just people are talking about it and that's all we need, that's all we want, right, is for people to talk about it, so. It worked. <laughs> I love it. Damian Priest, I want to thank you so much. Guys, until next time, we're out. Hey, guys. This interview brought to you for the price of On the House by NordVPN.com slash Fightful. Check out NordVPN.com slash Fightful to check all your region block shows, get pay-per-views, maybe a little bit more affordably than usual, avoid price discrimination, Browse securely, all that good stuff. You can also use the code FIGHTFUL. You'll save 70% off, plus get one additional month for free. And it's all backed with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, just let them know you get your money back. There's no risk, and this investment is going to save you money as well, if you so choose. I often find that when I'm traveling, there's certain shows that I can't watch because it says I'm not in my home area. NordVPN.com slash Fightful takes care of that. Reminder, use that code Fightful if you want. Hit them up at NordVPN on Twitter and enjoy the interview.